I'm uh, Jerry Lips. I'm the director of the Cooper Center. My field of specialization is really paleobiology in general of marine environments, and I work on microfossils and invertebrates, and even marine mammals. Well, we have several different kinds of paleontology, of course, vertebrate, uh, invertebrate, paleobotany, and micropaleontology. And most of those are self-explanatory, but invertebrate paleontologist is someone who does invertebrates in general. That could be in anything from sponges up to uh, uh, tunicates and not vertebrates. Microfossils are anything it takes to use a microscope to see the organism. It's kind of an artificial definition. So I define them more in terms of the fact they're single-celled organisms. Well, I think it started when I was a little kid uh, with uh, reading a comic book, actually. It was a Donald Duck comic book. I still remember it. I wish I could find a copy of it. And it shows the, the nephews, the little ducks, running through a museum with dinosaurs. And they run past a door labeled paleontologist. And I thought, wow, if, if some guy is a paleontologist and has an office in with all those bones, that's what I want to be. And along the way, my father, who was an office manager for the city of Los Angeles, took a course in mineralogy with a friend of his who cut rocks and then we did field trips out to collect these rocks and that cinched it for me. That's what I wanted to be as a geologist, paleontologist and I wrote an essay in the sixth grade on how I wanted to be a geologist. I never changed my mind. It's been a great life. The highlights actually started with some of the first work I did on the Channel Islands of Southern California. We visited five of the seven islands and collected fossils from most of them and wrote something like 28 papers starting when I was an undergraduate about our discoveries on those islands. Then I did a dissertation at UCLA on planktonic forum maneuver from California, from Miocene, California. And that was another um, highlight that got me working more towards what the oil industry likes to have. But then I got more interested in how foraminifera in particular live and began a study of them initially for a couple of weeks at any Weetok Atoll out in the middle of the Pacific. And at the same time I applied for a grant for the National Science Foundation to go to Antarctica and study living foraminifera there. We got that, we continued that project for about 12 years looking at foraminifera and eventually transferred over to the Ross Ice Shelf and just looked for life under the Ross Ice Shelf. Antarctica was just the greatest adventure of my whole life. But it got to be very time consuming, spending three, four months a year there, and it was kind of disruptive to my family. So I decided I would switch and start working in Papua New Guinea on reefs where it was warmer and I didn't have to go for quite so long. And that was another highlight. And then I had great times with the Russians, working with them for probably 15 years. Still, I'm working with some of them. And that started when I wanted to know about the first foraminifera in the fossil record. Later to China and to Australia to look at places there as well. So I, you know, everything's been a highlight. My whole life has been a highlight. Oh yes, we worked in Antarctica for on the Antarctic Peninsula for eight to ten years, depending on how you count it. And we were scuba diving in Arthur Harbor uh, off, it's part of Amber's Island on the Antarctic Peninsula. <clears throat> and we dove around all these islands that were unnamed. So myself and one of my graduate students, the main guy who was helping me with the project, both have islands named after us. And those were nominated to the American Board of Geographic Place Names, I think by the captain of the ship he wrote. I'm not sure about that. It just appeared one day, but I think he was the one. It's very busy. Of course, we're, we're just starting out, really. Um, the center was established over a long period of time, but actually formed officially about July of last year 
and then I was hired in June, uh, January, and we finished hiring the other two people so that we have a full staff that are, have been hired now. So we're just up and running fully. Just really, this, this is the first month that we've had a full lab of 40 volunteers and interns and students working in the lab. And that in itself is a big management issue, although not a problem. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Well, if you combine paleontology with geology and with marine biology or biology in general, then it's one of the most exciting things you can do because paleontology is about solving the problems that organisms have in the distant past. And when you consider that we maybe know 12% of the animals, for example, that were living at any one time, um, the fossil record has a lot of gaps, so there's a lot of detective work that we have to do, and that's all really exciting. And I love it because I combine field work with lab work with writing, the three things I like to do best. Uh, well, I've had a lot of different kinds of encounters with animals, ranging from rats chewing on my feet to sharks attacking and even uh, leopard seals in Antarctica encountering us in ways that we thought were a bit threatening, like chewing on the back of our rubber boats and approaching us underwater when we were at 90 feet and kind of keeping us locked down. So those are some of the exciting things. Uh, one that I particularly remember is the encounter I had with a kangaroo who jumped between my legs, uh, quite by accident, I guess, <laughs> but it was pretty scary to have a kangaroo with his legs between your legs and uh, his face right next to my face. Maybe it was a her. Who knows what it was. Anyway, I grabbed him and then tossed, tossed it off of me and it hopped away. But for there for a moment it was pretty spectacular and I guess it must have been because the, the uh, Australians that were on the field trip with me uh, saw it happen and they came running down and said, oh, we've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> been a lot of things like that. Snakes, sea snakes, rattlesnakes, spitting cobras, all of those. Bats, had a lot of encounters with bats. So the, it would take a book to get all those stories out. That's just a sample. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you want more information about the Cooper Center or any of us, you can check us out at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and the Cooper Channel. Thanks very much.